there in the moment. Um, the State Performance Officer, Joe, you recruited? Yeah, so um, Sue should be here around 2 or 2.30, consistent with the agenda. I sent, I sent it to her. I didn't hear back from her the second time, but um, I, we did make sure she had the agenda, and she said she could be here. Okay, so this got added to the agenda because uh, there was an article in Digger uh, about a meeting of one of our legislative committees, uh, and uh, in it was a reference to the fact that um, there wasn't good coverage of technology uh, in state government and something needed to be done about it. And of course, we're discussing exactly that same subject here. So it made sense to, uh, to try to interact with them as to what, what uh, people are coming up with. Yeah, I heard just some, she'll explain more of it. Her initial reaction was they were sort of focusing on IT related type committees and so she wasn't sure it was directly relevant, but I think it would still be good to talk to her because there's also just this big push at the state level, you know, about looking at shared responsibilities. Like in our case, there's some health agencies that do transit, and we do transit, and should we just, you know, consolidate? And so I think it's just a smart thing to do to check in with her anyway. Okay. So I don't think that will fit. Um, that will two to three. Um, then uh, a representative from the Joint Fiscal Committee is coming uh, in uh, coming at three at Captain Bound. And that's because of one of the things that's in the, in the law about what we're supposed to do. So let me turn to that subject. Uh, first, though, on the agenda, public comment. Uh, we have no public members, as far as I know. The only thing, uh, but we do have a worker covering us again. Uh, as I recall, Orca is a, um, a video program in this county, public access video yes. station in this county, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for Washington County. Okay. Um, uh, so public comment goes by quickly. Um, and uh, so let me go to review the requirements of the report. Now I sent this around, but Ryan actually made paper copies. So, um, Thank you. In our discussion the last time, is it all the way around? Okay, so we'll We talked about the five um, required elements of our report that are in Section 1H of the uh, law uh, that created us. Um, and uh, it has at the end what the report has to have. Now, you might have thought that that would be the only place that it says what we're supposed to, to do. Um, but I think Brian Chena made the observation that this thing had gotten massaged as it went through committees a bit. And the result is that some things that look close to being requirements are elsewhere. And so I just want to make sure that we at least look at them and know that we have uh, and, and see what we think about what we need to do with them. The five um, kind of got divided up at the last meeting among us. And we'll talk about that when we get to the report. Um, but some of these others we're going to talk about. So, uh, the first thing, uh, I went through the, the, the law carefully. Um, in A2, uh, states the purpose of the uh, task force, and it includes action things, not just purpose. Make recommendations on the responsible growth of Vermont's emerging technology markets. Now, I have to admit to you, I don't know what that is, <laughs> means particularly. Um, so that caught my attention. The use of artificial intelligence in state government, and the difference between that and the rest of the requirements is the use of artificial intelligence generally, uh, not in specifically in state government. And then state regulation of artificial intelligence field. That is in uh, the uh, fourth, um, uh, no, it's third of the five that are above as you will see. I had a couple of observations, but we should discuss it. Um, the first purpose has to be, can be seen as a restatement of four, if you look about the proposal for the responsible and ethical development of artificial intelligence 
residents in the state, including an identification of potential uh, risks and benefits of such development. Now, when we had a discussion of this at the last meeting, uh, we talked about ethics um, uh, as for being somewhat of a regulatory requirement. You could look at it as a proposal for development. In other words, it's a uh, requirement for us to look at um, how we might uh, develop an ethical, that might develop artificial intelligence in the state, including the economic opportunity of uh, artificial intelligence. And certainly the language later on seems to be more consistent with that. Or the, or the one that I read in this paragraph I just talked about. Um, and, and I know that it's about emerging technology market, not just I want to intelligence, whatever that means, or whatever, wherever it comes from. Um, and then the, the purpose to make uh, recommendations to the use of AI and state government is not in the list of five at all. Um, and so the question is, was this intended to be a requirement for the report? Um, uh, if so, we've got to add it up on the list of things that we've been talking about. And you will see, and that gets to the next part of it, as you get into B1, 2, and 3, the um, <coughs> one on the use of artificial intelligence in state government, which is two, uh, it has an extra component, which is includes an analysis of fiscal impact. And it was that component uh, that caused us to uh, ask the uh, Joint Fiscal Committee to send somebody over for a little bit of time. Joint Fiscal Committee is the component of the legislature. These are employees of, all, of the legislative branch um, who support the money committees uh, and have various uh, functions in, in uh, that together. And they certainly are the people who can tell us uh, or give us some advice about how we look at the idea of uh, an analysis of the fiscal impact of state in state uh, for state government on artificial intelligence, and that's what I'm going to talk about briefly uh, today. So I came down to some thoughts at the end. Uh, one is I think we have to get the AI by state government component uh, separately addressed in the report, and that I'm a little bit surprised by the lack of something specific about economic opportunity, and we ought to talk about whether that's something we, we should put in the report, which would require us, of course, to know something about it. Or, <laughs> Thoughts? Well, not occurring in August. And <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, you know, um, under the report requirements number four, which is the whole the responsible and technical development of artificial intelligence can say, including education of risks and benefits. And I was thinking that's really broad, and a lot of a lot of those other sort of under purposes or under other expectations can fit into that, like whether and how how to use artificial intelligence in the state. To me, is that's the same question of responsible ethical development, whether it's by the state or anybody else, and um, and uh, same thing with. You know, include your fiscal impact is kind of a risk when you think about it. That's a risk associated with artificial intelligence. And <clears throat> whether the state regulates artificial intelligence, I think that's also related to the um, responsible and ethical development of artificial intelligence. Well, so, that's a separate one of the print three. <clears throat> yeah, that's print. But I'm saying, you know, in, maybe it doesn't matter as long as we tick all of these off somewhere in the report, but I think organizationally, I think those all kind of fit under that general category. And um, so, okay. but I, I feel so okay. That point for N4 is in the state, not in state government, and the others are by and in state government. I guess I think of the state as, as the state of Vermont as in the state. <laughs> so, it's, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're an entity in the state that operates within the state similar to a private, you know, whatever, or it could be a not-for-profit, it could be a for-profit group, but, so, I sort of saw that all, yeah, I mean, consistent with number four is kind of the meat of it, right? Number four of what's in the report, but, um, 
But I'm okay with wherever. Is your question whether or not we need to address all of these extra things that are scattered around outside of the report? Are they additional requirements of the report, or if the process you're going through is a possible way to look at it? No, they're um, uh, parts of what is in the final list, uh, and just uh, directing you to be expansionary about the final list and make sure you include this yeah. element. It's sort of like they're just rambling along when they write the legislation and then, you know, thinking about well, these are the things we're kind of concerned about and, you know, uh, it's not a perfect process, right? Yeah, they definitely strike me as, you know, elements of answering the other five, all yeah. of the other things. They definitely do. But I think, you know, just for saying, we just need to keep sort of a, a side list, make sure that we, at least for, you know, at least in the language we use, we, we make it a little bit clear what they're referring to in these five, though. That makes sense, right? So, you know, you mentioned fiscal, for example. So, in answering the risk part of the four in there, we just make sure that at some point we have something addressing the fiscal impacts or risks. Yes. And it's really hard to know if that one is really, that one's going to be really tough. And that could be the answer, right? <laughs> Well, joint fiscal is going to come and tell us what yeah. we have. <laughs> uh, and essentially, they're going to say they don't care. If, if I understand it right, the head of the office is Steve Klein, and we had a discussion for about 15 appointment. So we understood what the request was, and he just, well, I don't know what we can say. Um, certainly, the literature out there says there will be a dramatic effects uh, in the economy. And um, the question of uh, what part of that so I would say that even though Steve Klein can't predict, he's the most knowledgeable person about money in the state of Vermont, so it's a good person to have talk to us. Yeah, so what we get is I'm going to go to Brian here. I'm, um, if you looked at who came and testified for this bill, um, I think it, it sheds a little light on maybe where how the language ended up the way it did, um, and maybe perhaps maybe it would shed a little light on the intention of of the, of the language and what what the legislature is looking for from the group. Um, we, there was um, you and Milo, who was one of the witnesses presenting. Um, you had uh, Josh Bongard, who was a professor from UVM. And you had um, Bruce Duncan, who's from the Terrasim Foundation in Bristol. And they're, they're the company trying to um, build computers to store people's minds. And, um, and, then, um, and so I think when you think about the context of, like, of, of, of the witnesses, it, it, I think when you see language like, um, the responsible and ethical development, you might get a little bit of where that was coming from. Um, and responsible growth of emerging technology markets. You know, maybe if you think about computer storing mines and autonomous weapon submarines, which is what Josh Bombard works on, like, or I think those autonomous weapons based stuff, I don't know if it's just submarines, but. Um, so I guess what I'm getting at is that um, that I think that the intention was for us to be very broad and look at the overall economy, not just the state government. And that piece around fiscal um, the fiscal impact, I don't think it was just risk. I also, I, 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 in fact, there was another witness. Um, Who's your boss? The, the secretary's name, your boss. Uh, John Quinn. John Quinn? Quinn? Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. So secretary, he's a secretary. Yes. Secretary Quinn came in and told us how, um, how the state replaced workers with AI to upgrade servers. I believe that was the story. Like, there was, a, there was an AI program. I, I mean, it was I don't want to but not replacing, right? So we have, we have AI that goes out and monitors the performance of servers in our server farm. We have 1,300 servers that we have in the server farm. And there's one AI that does that? And there's an AI, well, so they're virtual servers, so we have an AI that we use that monitors them and moves them 
on the physical machines that need to be less taxing so that we're constantly getting sort of the best performance. So with that, with, I, if people don't mind me just asking some questions to illustrate the point, um, if you didn't have the AI, how many people would it take to do that work? Well, we never had the people, but if, if we yeah. wanted to, so we never did yeah, the work, yeah. right? We yeah. didn't work. <laughs> um, but I would say, you know, you're, you, you, that would be a 24 hour a day job. And so that would at least be three shifts worth of somebody. So when I said replace, I, that was probably not the, the best word because replace implies that there was something there before. Right. But I think I, I'm struggling with the right word, but the AI is doing the job of at least three people. And the AI is a person who monitors the AI. But the point is that if the work of three people could be managed by one person using the tool of AI, that that's a more efficient use of state resources. Right. And that's really, when it comes to the fiscal impact, it wasn't just the risk, right. it was also the potential benefits and how can AI be used to maximize tax, the, you know, taxes of the state? How can, you know, how can it make the state be a more efficient, productive server to the people? So I think that I wanted to just throw that out there because I know that was part of the discussion because it was part of Secretary Clint's point when um, he was asked about how AI might be already be used as kickoff. Yeah, and it, actually there's two, that's one of, I'd say, two really prominent examples for us. The other one is over in the DOT, which I think um, Joe knows a little bit about, where they're using neural networks to predict road and bridge conditions. And so they're able to feed all of this data around like weather patterns, travel patterns, materials that were used, the data of those materials that were used, um, you know, methods that were used, and so they can tell kind of, they, they're more accurate in being able to assess like what bridges and roads are going to need maintenance in the future um, and not having to be as reactive to it, and they're just getting ahead of the game a little bit more, so. Yeah, and, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, is that a UVM office of tech commercialization? That no, that's just within the agency of transportation. Oh, no, for years, mm -hmm. you talked about. The, no, that, that's within the Agency of Digital Services. Okay. That's, um, yeah, that's our cloud computing group. Gotcha. Yep. So I'd like to go back to the question that Brian asked. Would this be actually three people, or would this uh, job be tacked on to someone else's workload? Um, so we have never been able to do it. We've never had the resources to do it because it, you know, it's a pretty, like, it's, it's a, you know, it's basically 100% coverage of time, right? right? I mean, that you can't have somebody taking breaks, you can't have somebody go on a vacation, you can't have somebody not working the night shift um, because it's constantly reacting to disk failing, performance increases because it's, you know, in the middle of open enrollment, so server utilization goes up, it's constantly working to kind of move things around. Um, so, Really, the shortest answer to your question is we could have tried, you know, asked somebody to do it, but they would have probably only been successful, you know, a few hours a day in doing this, right? So, so it would have been three people, possibly. Yes. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not I mean, you know. Responsibility. Yeah. But you know, yeah. someone who was doing staffing would say this would be three people to cover twenty-four yeah. hours worth of. So, so um, with regards to the state government, one might argue that there are some jobs that this would make sense to, to use AI, to you know it's more efficient, it's saving money, but the trade-off is at what point is AI going to actually be taking good jobs that people used to have? And I think if we zoom out to the economy as a whole, when you, know, you talk about the economic uh, opportunity of software, I think that's the language you use, from software development, but I, I think um, in general, it might, I think it would be good if our report looked at a broader economic lens of the risks and benefits to the economy and did address not only the benefits, or not only the risks of job loss, but also the potential benefits um, to humanity and the planet and for the economy that AI poses. Because, I mean, the idea, the idea we had heard Stephanie Sabino talk about a lesser work week. I mean, before unions fought for a 40 hour work week, people were working 60 hours and like being like, you know, beaten up in their jobs and like, and uh, could you imagine if people only have to work 20 hours a week and were able to make a good living? Because AI I made, mean, you know, so I'm just putting it out there that there be. Now that's all inching up again, right? People are working longer. Yes, yeah. Because you I think have... because, well, also because of transition, because until AI catches up with itself, it creates this gigantic level of work that there are fewer people to work because everybody's trying to downsize. 
Well, I mean, there's the thing for me, the way I try to filter everything is just from a Vermont context, right? There's, there's AL, all these issues are true in the broader AI context, but in Vermont, we have a labor shortage that exceeds probably the rest of the country in a lot of areas, right? Um, we have, we're, we're more focused on small business than a lot of other areas in the country, meaning that, um, you know, most of our, you know, private businesses are way more than, we have a much higher percentage of private business to the small business than the rest of the country, I think. Um, so, do those things kind of like change the, the equation around? Like we heard from the folks in the agriculture industry when they were talking about how AI and robotics really helped them like achieve production levels that they weren't able to achieve before because they, you know, they couldn't find workers to, you know, add more cows to their herd and do more milking and all those things, right? So that's the way I kind of have seen, at least as we've talked to people, the risk or like the whole equation playing around around the workforce and like there's not as much displacement as supplementation. Yeah, I mean, I see that. that's a word. Uh, uh, yeah, there's not a, as much, <laughs> but both are, are possible. I mean, you, you, you go and, uh, and by the way, I mean, just an overview comment. Um, uh, there's a fair amount of stuff, you know, as we get go, uh, going and working on the report that is back in, in our records. So, for example, Stephanie's, uh, Stephanie Sabrino's uh, slides. Remember, she did a PowerPoint presentation on the impact, a labor impact of uh, uh, technology generally and what might be expected from AI and I am to do is. And I hope people will go, we go back to Slack and do it. It turns out that John Cohn has been putting something in about every week uh, and he's been putting in good stuff. Uh, Brian put in uh, the ethical uh, standards from the EU. Um, I think they may have circulated, or some of them, some of them may have circulated before, but now anyway, they're back in our uh, official uh, record. Um, and uh, John has been working, started a template, which came from a couple of these meetings, which we didn't have a quorum of what it is. This is where Brian is going to be able to back up as well, just as I always have back issues. Oh, okay. This is carry on. I might lay on the floor in a minute. <laughs> Which is fine. If, uh, uh, we want to pick that up on video. We need a massage. <laughs> need a massage and robot. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of good things. Like you said, uh, a break, you, Brian. It, it, there's a fair amount. So like people, as they pick up stuff like this, um, uh, you know, Donna and Jane work in this field. If you pick up stuff, I hope you will do it, and I hope people are, are using Slack. And I remember that Slack was the way we were making our uh, record publicly accessible, and so I, I, I became an offender of sending out emails, and uh, <laughs> that's not the way we're supposed to uh, do business. So that's just an aside, but I think an important side is we get to yeah. the and get, get to the issue of developing the report. And sending John lots of links and papers, and he keeps putting them up on Slack, only because I don't want to bombard the entire committee. And he was the one that has been doing that, so. Yeah, well, now that's right that, that we're getting them. The document, though, that really helps a lot with respect to looking at a lot of ethical issues and the materials that are out there is that document that you had UVM produce, Brian. Um, I finally went back to look at that study, but I went and looked at all of the references in there, and they did the most thorough job I've seen. And I was like, in some of our efforts, I'm like, why are we repeating? Right. Uh, that work since it, it was amazingly thorough if you actually really look at the individual documents that are linked to there. Yeah, they they gave a whole long list of it, right? We have it only on papers. That, that isn't in Slack, right? I don't okay. think. I, I sent it out over an email, yeah. and, but I don't know if it's posted on Slack. So could you put it on Slack so that we uh, we get in the habit of developing our record that way? Because that's what's yeah. supposed to give public access. Just for the, I'm going to say this on camera. So the study that we're talking about is, is publicly accessible. If you Google Vermont Legislative Research Service, it brings you to a website that UVM uh, 
manages and which it posts all of the studies that students have done for legislators. And if you search in that study database, artificial intelligence, it's the only one. So it is publicly accessible right now if someone wants to go look it up before I post it on Slack. But before our meeting, in order to write some of the ethical issues, and I was summarizing the ones you have, then when I went and looked at all the documents that are posted there, nine states have already adopted one of those ethical documents on AI. And I was like, why are we not, why are we repeating all of that work? Why don't we just? Well, it, we would be repeating that work if we uh, try to develop our own ethical statements. If you follow nine states, which and knowing about nine states and became a tenth to uh, pick one up, that would be work that we should be doing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just like just to be more precise. In how, what form are they adopted? Is it, is it legislation? Is it you know, administrative it's policy or various? Some of them are just yeah. So uh, let me ask everybody to look at the. Uh, Slack. Now, does everybody know how to use Slack now? Everybody knows how? Yeah, no. <laughs> point and click, you just kind of point and click. If someone else has internet access, you can put it on Slack right now. I just, my computer won't connect to the internet here. I can use Slack. That's my problem. Because yeah. I have a link to it. <laughs> you have it, right? Yeah, maybe we can just, yeah, maybe we can just stick it in Slack right, right now as a group. And and you were allowed right. right. um, in the beginning based on your email address. Uh, that's uh, Kayla. So if your email address my email is, we'll allow you to get in and look at all of the various oh, okay. things. And Slack is developed. Notice this here. Um, yeah, go back on the list. Slack was up. Slack's <laughs> We're looking for the study to post it in there right now in real time just so it gets it done immediately. Okay. Uh, Slack has a number of what they call the, the various uh, threads that go on in it. Well, then, so chan channels? Channels, that's what they call channels. Pop quiz. So what's happened is that in the last couple of months, primarily, I think it's uh, about, uh, from Brian, Brian and John Cohn's effort, they have See, put in, or two, or two, or two, or two yeah. I don't know where she posted it, but she Okay, see so this is uh, just yeah. generally, yeah. these channels started out with just a general channel. Yeah. And people have been, as they use Slack, of adding channels. For example, uh, there was a channel for the development of the February report. Remember that was the report, we had this interim report that said we want the extension. And there's a channel for the final report right here. Uh, that includes that uh, attempt to uh, put an outline of where we're going with a, a report from doing it. So this looks like it goes from general to me, or in, uh, in ethics, because most of it is ethical stuff. Is that what it is? It's but, actually, I think, broader than ethics. Okay, that's what we're going to So it goes in general, I would be good. Yeah, in general. Because we're going to use it for the ethics, but there's actually a lot of other resources. Now, there. if you go into general, mm -hmm. on the bottom, come down. It will let you put on a, there's Bernie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what's this, UVM? Oh, that's, that's it, you've already got it, yeah, right? Yeah, we found it, so we're gonna close it. it. So you can just uh, uh, hit uh, uh, enter it now. Ryan posted this and add a little text telling why, why, you, why you did this. Well, that's very productive. Thank you. What do you want to say? This is a report. It was done by UVM, right? Yes. No, they, they, they were asked to go out it was the literature to look at what's been going on around the country. It was not by UVM students, though. OK. This, it was a, there's a, UVM has a, a legislative research service that legislators can request um, studies, like sort of literature reviews or mini studies, and so I've used them a few times, one time just for this, to find out what's going on in AI, in this, like if other states had done anything like this and what they had done, but I also did one around the zero waste economy if anyone's interested, or and um, the opiate crisis, 
So I feel like you're, mo you're best first with this. So what do you want to say? Or like a description? This is a study done by you. This is a study done by you, the M students. Um, regarding AI policy in, in period. <laughs> because I don't think it's just yeah. in the US. Regarding AI policy and law. I think that's a really simple way to put it, and then people can read it and they can see what they look like. So. Okay, good. Um, so that will help us in getting to the steps of getting to our. And just so people know, if there was something we needed studied related to this at work that we've been doing, or like we want more study, I could request another, I could say to you, to the UVM Research Service, like, can you look into these questions further, and they might find students they can assign to do that. So just putting it out there, that if we felt like we needed a little more info, or the legislature might need some more info, we can put that request in now, and by January they may have something else. Hey, Brian, so this report was done over a year, almost a year. Yes. <laughs> Maybe one thing is go back and they do an update. Yes. That's, a, that's reasonable, yeah. I, no, I did a, because I can do it, I still have some sources in which I can do it. I did a, a 50 state look for statutes that involve the AI, every one that included the, they did reference to artificial, uh, artificial intelligence, and didn't find a law. I, the question was, was there a task force like this? Uh, if you recall, in the first, um, which is about uh, 25, uh, of the report requirements, that is the permanent, uh, permanent commission, um, that I found one from Washington that was on job applications that was interesting. Uh, that was probably the most interesting again, but it wasn't a lot. There is not a lot of uh, legislative statute uh, reference to uh, AI out there now still. But the material that you're talking about, like uh, ethical sins and all that sort of stuff, there's a lot of that, I know. And it seems to be exploding in terms of because uh, it's getting into the consciousness of people what it is and what the both opportunities and challenges are, and all of a sudden, all of a lot of people are writing about it. So we I'm even had something in Atlantic by Henry Kissinger that shows it's yeah, across the line. Yeah, there's a bunch of three articles. I've read through them, but I can go back to the report that was informative for us to ask the students to research uh, job loss in Vermont. And I think probably the first sector that will see it is retail. And so how do they see this unfolding? I'm just going to take some notes as we go about what might be in any kind of study. And then they can tell us the limits of right. what they can do. Some so are retail. A effective artificial intelligence, or well, it's, it's the Amazon most, effect, right? I think it's the most likely sector to have a artificial intelligence visit, just because, like, there's a job shortage. I mean, there's a worker shortage, as we've already spoke about, and uh, I don't know. Like, Dennis here sits on the workforce development uh, committee, and so do they? I know unemployed workers have a preference in uh, in placement in these programs. What sort of opportunities are there for workers who have a job and are looking to better themselves? Well, you can always go down to the Department of Labor and get on the website and you know look for jobs that are out there that might contain I'm talking about training. 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 Um, well, Really, they just pretty much gear at those that are uh, laid off. Unemployed, okay, so uh, we or, need to... or, or students. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, they have uh, apprenticeship programs. Um, and uh, one of the main things that they're really looking at is starting looking at students as early as the seventh grade, uh, trying to see, you know, what uh, way they want to, you know, what career path that they want. Uh, they also meet with all kinds of employers to find out what skill levels that they need so that they can um, uh, take, take that and go to the schools and talk to the guidance counselors and the students and say, okay, well, you know, we're going to have a shortage, you know, in you know, three or four years from now, we've got a nursing shortage, you know, big time. 
We have construction trades. Uh, in the apprenticeship program, the average construction trade worker is 57 years old. And uh, so it's, I mean, there's, there's opportunity, opportunities like that. Um, it's the, the traditional four-year college degree. Mm -hmm. So, and you know. Well, I guess that's my question is, so we're looking at the possibility of a glut of workers being displaced by artificial intelligence. And so, that it takes time to train workers, mm -hmm. particularly for some of the jobs that are going to be available. So does the Workforce Development Program have a program for uh, workers before they're displaced to help them with the training for some of these jobs that they can't fill in already? Yes, uh, they have uh, like satellite offices throughout the state and also uh, they have you know, special Centers, uh, individuals can go and get the training that they that they want to see for the future. What? That's so. There's actually a program with the VTP we were talking about last week where they were talking with kids like as young as like seventh grade. I think specifically like manufacturing sectors, just to try to get kids interested in that. There's a lot exactly. more involved in that sector as much. I mean, you know, uh, you know, as we all know, college is extremely expensive. Yeah. But Students come to student debt, yeah. um, you know, and then being able to find that particular field that you get a degree in can be difficult. I, I can tell from experience that I have two sons that, that have graduated, who had a bachelor's degree, and you found out that the jobs were so far and few between that they went back to school in computer science, how they both get jobs, you know, in the field that they want. Um, so, yeah, you're right, uh, uh, you know. You know, manufacturing is making a small comebacks, especially here in Vermont. Uh, a, you know, and so we need to have these uh, 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 new workers, you know, trained in, in those positions. And and the same thing in construction. And let them know that you know they have good paying jobs, with good benefits, and you can make careers out of it. So just a quick follow. up Are they also looking at uh, assessing what that training cost be? So here's the context. This is related to something Don and you brought up before on educating the personnel, you know, getting them to be able to use the AI. And also, as you were just talking about, you know, even though you don't have the three people that are being replaced, that person running the AI system has to have a certain skill set level. Yeah. yeah. So if they if they have mechanisms for that, I mean, well, there are there are some employers, uh, some kind of general dynamics, which which they're paying for the worker to get the skill level and the, skill, and, the, and, the and the worker has to agree to like you know, like, you know a two year or three year uh, hiatus with that uh, employer and so there are employers out there that do that um, and you know again you're looking at the apprenticeship uh, programs uh, I know the uh, 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 the building trades here in Vermont uh, have apprenticeship programs uh, where you know an individual can sign up go through the apprenticeship program work get the training that they need, they'll get paid, but the, the, the training is being paid by the union, or also with some help from the construction trades. So, okay, can we uh, take a break from this because we'll come back to it when we're discussing the report. Um, we have a, a guest uh, here. You see that it was um, uh, called for two or three, it's almost two, and we, we should uh, start. I'll let her introduce herself, please, and ask every, all of you to introduce to her, and then we can introduce it. Okay. So I'm Sue Zeller. I'm the stage chief performance officer, and I've been in that role for five years, and for the eight prior to that, I was a deputy commissioner of finance and management. And you know each other, but I'm Mark Holmes. I'm the chief technology officer. I'm Ryan Flanagan. I'm a temporary employee with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Just, just introduce yourself as our super staff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Temporary, yeah. temporary yeah. employees. Does all the work. Right. <laughs> Don Rizzo. I'm in civil and environmental resources. Okay. Brian Chena. I'm a social worker and a state representative. Joe Segala. Uh, Gene Santos. I'm a professor of engineering at Dartmouth College. Okay. Jill Sharma, Vermont State Labor Council, AFL-CIO. 
Yes. Dennis Vatic, political director for my city. And John Dooley, retired judge. Um, so uh, what it got this on our agenda is that there was a bigger article about a meeting on the Sunset Commission? The Sunset Commission. Uh, which is established to uh, talk about whether boards and committees uh, that are established by statute or otherwise can, should be sunsetted and not continue. Uh, when they uh, do what they go beyond their uh, useful life, I guess is, is the way to put it. Um, and uh, part of the discussion uh, that Sue was at was talking about um, that there's a need actually for better coverage and technology set uh, part. Uh, so it's the opposite of the sunset. Um, we need something because this duplication of that subject and, and not uh, a comprehensive treatment of it. This is, of course, relevant because we're supposed to make a recommendation on whether to establish a permanent uh, commission to study the artificial intelligence field. So um, that we are part of this question of uh, how, how should the state be looking at uh, and getting information on it, getting recommendations of the technology field. So I'm interested in where you are in that uh, work and what advice you have for us to how we answer what the statute says we're supposed to answer. So the purpose of the Sunset Advisory Commission, which is composed of uh, four legislative members and two members appointed by the governor, one of which is me, um, our job is to go through each of the 252 boards and commissions that exist and to see if they're still relevant, they actually meet, if, if they are still relevant and meet, do we need to make any changes? There's a lot of inconsistency with per diems and things like that. Um, and what we've also found is a number of the commissions that we recommend, and then we do a report at the end of the year recommend to the legislature, ones that we think um, either language changes or for repeal. Of recent, in the last couple of years, the legislature has um, you know, taken the position that all reports that get added have to have a sunset date in the statutory language and all commissions and boards that get founded have to have a sunset date. And that will enable a review, not of 252 all at once, but as they come due, the legislature and the agency and departments that those boards and commissions are attached to can evaluate it in something not like we're doing, you know, not all at once and craziness. So um, we've gone through a number of agencies. We have the agency come in and testify we're also concerned with how much administrative support time it takes from away from the agency's primary duty to support a commission or a board if it is no longer needed. Um, we found several that just didn't have sunsets. They were commissioned to do one report. They did that report. They submitted it, but it's still in statute. And authoritatively, while it's still in statute, the governor has to appoint members, even if they don't meet, even if they haven't met. <laughs> well, you want a certificate for your wall. Yes, that's right. You can say, I am the chair of the non-meeting commission. So um, it's been a lot of work. Before we make a decision to eliminate, we also talk to the board chair themselves, if in fact they are active, and we get their perspective. And as you can imagine, every board and commission thinks they're, for the most part, thinks they're very vital. Um, we found a couple that we merged because they're original mandate was very close. Uh, sometimes their mandate, you know, they may have four or five things they're responsible for, but three of them have gone away because of other statutory changes and things like that. So that's what our mission is. And as to IT and the comment that was put, uh, quoted in the Digger article, I said something about it being all over the place and uh, like control and oversight um, was really about telecom but it sort of gets boiled down into the same pot. We don't have a telecom responsibilities and statutes assigned to one unit of government. We have them assigned all over. We have public safety. We have the Agency of Digital Services. We have the Department of Public Safety. We have E911. So it's, you know, it's all over the place. And um, so that's one of the other things we're looking at is does it make sense to sort of have or recommend to the committees of jurisdiction that they look at it when they create a commission
Commission or board before they just go, oh, we should put that in agriculture, actually think about what the other existing boards and commissions are and whether they shouldn't all be in the same place for some continuity. So that's what our goal is. And um, we won't be doing it this year, but we just identified from our list all the ones, all the boards and commissions that sound to us like IT. Uh, and there aren't very many of them, uh, which is kind of interesting. You know, we seem to be, we have such concerns about cybersecurity and, you know, and, and yet we don't, we talk about it, but we don't seem to have gotten our um, thoughts all together and decided exactly how best to provide governance on a subject that is not only important to the state as a, a an IT using organization, but to the population and the citizens as well. So I think that's um, that's what I meant by my comment is we still haven't figured out how to get it all together. We just recently created the Agency of Digital Services, and along with that should probably come some review of whether we have the right com commissions or committees or board, whether we should have different ones, more, less, I don't know. So. That's, um, I'm happy to answer questions, yeah. So how did we fall in your report? How did I find? Now, how did you find us? Oh, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. Yeah. no Joe, you don't, you yeah. didn't uh, evaluate us? No, we, okay. haven't, we haven't been there yet. Okay. We, sure. We've gone through agriculture, a bunch of independent things like the Commission on Women. We've done AOT, we did transportation. And, um, we keep the transportation board. We, we, got, we got rid of one of them, although when the bill first went through last year, the Transportation Committee, and this is very funny, they didn't want to get rid of one of the boards and commissions because they knew nothing about it. And of course, our answer was, that's exactly why we should get rid of it. So, are you, are you, would you even be reviewing us? Because we're a task force yeah. that has no, a sense No, we won't be reviewing yeah. you. So yeah. we're, we're, we don't fall into that. Right. This isn't so about us.
change our minds or make a different decision based on the information that you might provide. So yeah. my brain started going in a different direction. Usually it does, I apologize. But so if we don't today have a border commission mm -hmm. for cybersecurity, yeah. right? Could we think independently? I mean, our problem, things we're going to be answering in our report are going to be strictly related to artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but maybe, the, you know, we have talked a lot, and I think we were all kind of pushing towards recommending a border commission for AI mm -hmm. continuing in, in a continuous fashion. Mm -hmm. Maybe we recommend a board for sort of, you know, more of these emerging technical social issues, and AI just becomes essentially a committee within that board, um, along with cyber. Because there's a lot of analog, like when we start talking about training, the, you know, training the workforce, um, you know, sharing information between government and private sector, um, you know, applying. Uh, a, you know, effective use, whether it's ethical or whatever, but it's effective use of a new technology. I think there's a lot of analog between, um, you know, the cyber issues that we're dealing with and how we're dealing with that. Like you were talking about training the workforce and a lot of that we're already doing with cyber. We're starting to talk about certificate programs coming out of high school mm -hmm. so that small businesses in Vermont can, you know, land themselves with some level of cyber security expertise without having to pay two hundred thousand dollars when you go when you go down to DC kind of thing. Um, something meaningful for their small business and then working your way up the chain as you go through the education cycles. Um, I, I, and I see AI is similar. I mean, I, I, that's what I was thinking as you guys were talking it's just more like some Uber um, tech, you know, advanced technology group because a lot of what I remember hearing from all the witnesses that we had is we're not really quite at AI yet. Maybe there's a couple of exceptions, but technology is really, really important to the economy in Vermont and being more productive and, and moving forward. And AI is like definitely, a, you know, it's, a lot of things are heading in that direction, but that's not just what we're about. And so maybe that's a way to think about it. And like IT and stuff, that sounds like hardware to me. Right. Hardware, you know, hardware, software, more very tactical kind of stuff. But right. a bigger advanced technology, Vermont Advanced Technology Commission could, you know, what what should the state be doing to try to facilitate and support businesses and institutions right. and the state government and, yeah. you know, using the best technology that's available, no matter what it is. I agree. So the only thing I would say in caution is um, when, when, you know, let's say that your report and it says that and the legislature agrees we should create the advanced technology statewide whatever um, it's still going to wind up being it, it's still going to wind up having to be attached to someone if you're going to have state resources on it it's going to fall to the state to support um, the activities and they'll have to be posted on state websites and transparency and you know all that so you even though it's not the hardware it's still, um, you still have to think about where it would live. It would probably be a good idea to think about that and maybe even include that in your, re in your recommendation. One of the challenges that um, the state, both the legislature and the administration are dealing with is 8911 is a perfect example. It doesn't, it's not a sign to anybody. It's just out there doing its thing, you know, and um, there's no, um, even though most of the boards and commissions, they have some oversight role to play on the activity of state government, but likewise, the agency and department that they are assigned to has some cross oversight um, responsibility to make sure that the board and commission is actually helping them and not, you know, preventing things from happening. So it's kind of a two way street, and you might want to think about how it would work. Uh, so this is another member of our task force arriving. Um, I'll let him introduce himself. So that I'm John. Sorry to interrupt. Hi, John. I'm Sue. <laughs> uh, 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 John is an AI professional okay. from IBM. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, more things. So our discussion is just about boards and commissions and how they function within state government. So um, I, I just think, you know, the more you could think about that yourself, the yep. better off you'd be when you try to make a recommendation to the legislature. So, you know, it doesn't wind up in let me, let me ask some more practical questions because you're in the middle of this. Uh, 
in your work, for example, describing that they're not all clear about uh, what kind of administrative support, when, whether they get mileage and per diem exactly. or all that. We're, we're, this is a task force on the chief. All of us uh, are uh, here as totally as volunteers without any report of volunteers. We're having trouble keeping our quorum, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where uh, this uh, meeting has a quorum, but the last of the three meetings, uh, which is uh, being a problem for us in developing the report. So this is uh, so what you get uh, uh, when you do it that way. I take it that if we are recommending a permit commission, it would have to be a permit commission that uh, at least covered per diems and mm -hmm. that's right. okay. so, so, and that's the norm. So that is the norm, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the things we're trying to do in the commission is um, some commissions have or boards have nothing about per diem. Some have specific amounts that disagree with the current per diem statute. You know, so we're trying to get all of that on an even footing. So yeah, so it is the norm now. Mm -hmm. And the when the rates are set in, I don't know, can be essay something. Okay. Now the next step comes in the money. But it will do you need a stamp. Now you're in a highly technical subject or a group of highly technical subjects. Um, and uh, there's a certain amount you can do with volunteers that have their expenses paid. Right. Uh, and uh, to go further you really need some kind of uh, staff availability or contractual availability of staff or that sort of thing. Is that a, a no-no these days in state government, or it's a it's a tough sell? Or well, it, it? It, I think it would be a tough sell, and it also has to be an organization that has a, on, in my view, and I, this isn't absolute, but in my um, looking at all of the organizations we have, it has to be something that has an ongoing um, role, like the Humanities Council or the Human um, Human Services you know, Board, or Commission on Women, where they have an executive director. In most of these cases, those organizations have an executive director and, and one or two staff people and the board members. So, um, but the difference between those two is that uh, not the Humanities mm -hmm. Council, but the Human Service Board is an adjudicative body. That is correct. So that's and, and they like often, the Public Utility yeah, Commission or that sort correct. of thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one of the questions we're batting around, because the, one of the questions we're also being asked is, should there be regulation, state regulation in this field is, uh, is this a commission you would give regulatory authority to? And that's another whole way of looking at it. So the, and obviously, if you gave a regulatory authority, of course it would have to have so. so the House has, um, has created responsibility for uh, IT, which in the legislature's mind includes um, internet and broadband and whatever else, yeah. and uh, cyber cyber security. So that, in the House, they have a committee that they've assigned that to. The Senate has yet to deal with that. The Senate doesn't really have any committee of jurisdiction that you would go to. Sometimes it's institution, sometimes it's you know, judiciary, sometimes. So uh, my understanding is that uh, Senator White is going to try to get them to make a decision on that, which would improve, I think, all of our lives so you know where that, you know, where you need to go in the Senate. Um, the Senate is struggling with these subjects. We're struggling with these subjects. You're struggling with these subjects. Yeah, we got assigned a task force to the Commerce Agency. I'm not sure what the history was that caused that, but mm -hmm. um, that's mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, uh, what uh, happened. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Okay, great. Thank you. If you think of anything else, Joe can, uh, Joe can always find it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we go back to the discussions that we're having about the report content, can we do one that I realize now is not on the, uh, on the uh, agenda? Right. So it's one left over from last time, which is, are we going to do more public hearings, and if so, where and when? Now, for those of you who have been part of this, we've done two, uh, Burlington and Linden. 
Burlington was very vibrant, well attended, went entirely its length. Linden, not so much. Uh, but it, we knew that. Linden is not because it's going to be a hard environment in the summer. Uh, because we and we went to Linden State to uh, now Northern uh, Illinois University, uh, Linden campus, with the hope we'd get some students and get some of the energy uh, young, from younger folks interested in this uh, that we got in, in Burlington. But we did. Uh, we got people. We got some people. We got uh, Brian helped a lot and got us some legislators, which was different from <coughs> Burlington. Uh, but in the aggregate, we had 10 people, maybe, and that was... That I mean, was they important. were appreciative that we came because they usually get left out, but it wasn't the younger folks that we had gotten in Burlington. We had one student, I think, that you Really? Yeah, and I, I don't know where it fits in the, whether it was public here or not, but I did go to that Rutland... Um, school. Uh, school. school. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, we heard a little bit from students, but it was, you know, despite the fact that I had an entirely captive audience, um, they couldn't go anywhere, and there was very little. Very few. Yeah, so. So I'd just like to say about our experience in Linden, um, we unfortunately had our meeting at the same time the young people who have their own artificial intelligence kind of group had a meeting. Yeah. So that kind of well, didn't I balance out. And I think that's something we should I, be more yeah. cautious of when we try to plan well, these things. I, don't, I wonder how big they were, but I okay. actually reached out to Evan and said, I don't know if Evan is a he or she, but I was like, they were emailing like, uh, this is a great opportunity. And I got kind of an officious pushback about, we've had this on our calendar for a long time. I'm, I'm just trying to start this up, but I don't want to lose the momentum. And I was like, you know, you're, uh, I didn't say you're missing an opportunity. I kept saying, oh, why don't we go branded or something like that in the end. And then we should come push. early and move. we'll start there and just tell you because that meeting was a little bit later than I was in that show anyway. It was, uh, it was ridiculous, and I apologize for not being able to get through it, but I tried. We, we went back and forth several times to try to exchange phone calls that didn't work. Yeah, um, it, it, but that was an issue. So you, but uh, I, I tend to be with John. Maybe we would have gotten two, three more people. Yeah, it wouldn't but make it. It wasn't going to be. It was a small, the, generally those things are also small. Yeah, it was going to be a small group of people who are interested in getting into uh, the field. Uh, and that was the idea, was an educational program. Yeah. Well, in answer to your question, John. So um, I had Dennis contact, uh, well, why don't you say we did that? Um, well, uh, Jill asked me to there's in the space down in Rotten in White River. And the uh, Rotten Regional Hospital has a uh, the Lady Center off of it, and that is available for your charge. Uh, of course, we haven't had a date yet, so I don't know when it'd be available to us, but uh, once we get a, a date plan, then we can reserve it. And also, I'm waiting to hear back from an individual that has uh, gotten um, other uh, free uh, meeting spaces in White River. I should have that to me yet. Let me, so I didn't know if we were at White River or not. But yeah, this is not White River. This is just over the river at the um, uh, Mantra Museum. Oh, yeah. I spoke to the director. Oh, He's yeah. very interested in hosting some of us. Now we get. Where is Mantra Museum? Norwich. Huh? It's it's uh, no, it's not Norwich. Well, I guess, yeah, right. you, you would say it's just it's, it's just like where the river is in Norwich. It, 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 it's in It's in Vermont. Yeah. 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 When you said oh <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah. Well, you might in September. I think the problem with Linden was uh, uh, our, the what was going to be hardest to get people, and we got in all the papers, and we had we were covered by the bar for yeah. and, and we got. I haven't read the story, but we did get a story, and uh, we got. Uh, you know, Digger did the VT Digger did the notice of that that thing, and we got it in, and some people contacted Brian and Kayla, and so we got some of that. Uh, but it's, you know, it's August, or it was it even August? Or, <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was the project it was. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's just the, the hardest place to get, and holding it at that time, that just made it, I think, impossible. Now, 
along those same lines, I think you might have seen the email thread this week. Mike Cole from Vermont STEM Corps reached out to us with the, uh, he had an article on his website. He created an autonomous video streaming mechanism for Applejack uh, Stadium over in Manchester. Oh, I saw that. And he said that he was more than willing, I guess he talked to the town manager over in Manchester to host a public hearing there. Huh? Oh. I know that's a little bit far. In from, man, well, yeah. 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 Well, the question is also, is Manchester <laughs> it's, it's between Rutland and Bennington, yeah. so it would, it would address the south western part of the state. I would think if we, should, think if we can do it, let's do one there, let's do one in the upper valley, let's do as many as we can. Go with, go with uh, yeah. Manchester and Montshire. Then you sort of covered like, you know, west, north, northeast, yeah. Sort of yeah. central and southwest. Okay, but the only thing that, to say is, is we got to seriously get working on this report. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, what is the uh, aggregate enthusiasm and time level of this group of volunteers? Uh, for purposes of getting to the to uh, a productive end of the, on the first of January, I, I'm just concerned about that. So, so how much of it is is it, it us getting more input and another getting people feel like we tried to get more input? You know, how much is it? I think it's probably to be at least 50-50 in that. So, uh, remember, we got, for example, which gets us some points with the legislature and in selling our product in the end, whatever it is. Uh, we got the uh, chair of the House and Senate Appropriations Committees. Uh, you know, this was thanks to uh, Brian sending out a to the, the legislative list and getting uh, some stuff on front porch forum going on around. And so we got we got uh, important people from the legislature, um, unlike the other ones. So anyway, we, we we accomplished that. So one of the, and they were the ones that said we're really happy that you came, right? Uh, they're the ones who would say, you know, uh, you, we, the state doesn't pay enough attention to uh, our part of the state. Um, one, uh, th this only makes it harder, but I think I had circulated a note that that um, Kathy Resmer from Seven Days who organizes Tech Jam yeah. asked us if we wanted to use yeah. this year's Tech Jam, which is October. Yes, that's still pending. Uh, but I mean, that's another you know, Champlain Valley, but it's October 17th. Do we want to do we want to use that in some way? Yes. Maybe not as an internal, but you know. No, no, no. If, if holding a session there would strike me as, as gathering the most people, uh, but it's just the county again. Yeah, that's the issue. So, Brian, correct me with this, because I believe you, you were there at the meeting, if not all the meeting, and when we got our extension, and it, I, it is my opinion that the legislators want us to hold these public hearings. And the public hearings, in their estimation, and I don't think they really care, consider whether or not we receive any mileage or any of these other things, are a very important component to this task force. And they also, I don't believe we are required to go to these things, and I realize that you know we all try to make a, a good effort to do so, yeah, but I really think we should be Five of us, by the way, at the one in Linda. So there's... In Burlington. I'm not, I mean, I was supposed to sunset on this committee when it was originally supposed to end, and when it's extended, remember, I, I'm only here through the end of August. You me personally. You're only here, you mean because when you start that school year again, yeah. you don't have time for us. Three night classes, and yeah, it's going to be Yeah, no. okay. <laughs> so, um, Can we be, if, if we accommodated your schedule and met in Burlington, would that help, or you really just can't do it? The driving here is hard, and the few times I've tried to call in, I get in for the first 20 minutes, and then I get dropped, and uh -huh. no one even knew why I dropped, so. It's just, it's, it's very embarrassing for an artificial intelligence <laughs> test. The peak of uh, technology at the moment is unable to complete the full work. <laughs> so um, just back, back to the report and the public hearings. Um, 
there's nothing in the statute saying we have to do public hearings. We chose to do that. Like our group decided we were going to do that, so we don't have to do them. I think we should do them. I think we should do as many as we can handle in the short amount of time. My, my suggestion would be, Don, I know your time coming to meetings may end in August, but perhaps you could at least review the report mm -hmm. and give us your final feedback, if, even if you can't come in September or October. I'm happy to try and call in. Okay. I, wanna, I have to be able to like leave, go teach, and then come back for the four hours. It's just impossible. Yeah, you're teaching. The problem is that it's the driving here, the staying the four hours, and the driving home. It's the six hours every time I come you know. So I don't, I've hit them all except one. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 and you were on the phone, I remember. So, so uh, uh, and of course we, we might, you know, accommodate you by going to Burlington. So I don't want to get distracted by your schedule again. I was just making the point that if you could continue helping us, what I would like to propose is that we have a final draft of the report done in November. So if that is the case, because we have till January 1st, so if our final draft is done in November, then it would give us one, five, one month for any last minute changes we want. So if this group met in September, in October, and in November, even if you can't come. Physically. Yeah, and we do dedicate those three times to working on the report and incorporating any public feedback we've heard. Then we could have the report done on time, and then we could use September and October to do the remaining public hearings that we want, which could include Manchester, Upper Valley, another one in Chittenden County, if we have the opportunity. And then we will have had how many? Uh, well, wasn't there also the you, one in White River as well? well what That's the other time. We have the meeting space available. It's probably better to say Upper Valley, because then White River is one particular town, but it, Montrose Museum is actually in Norwich, which is yeah. five miles north. Then, then if we're going to do this, then we should pick dates now and go to yes. sort of work on it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, let me say that I supported the going to Tech Jam because I think that is the biggest numbers and it is the highest uh, uh, percentage of uh, millennials and uh, people with uh, that are directly involved. Yeah. Focus on Do they come from all around the state? So uh, yeah. I would say yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's, it's a statewide event. It's a concentration from Chittenden County, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a gap. So when is the date? Uh, October 17th. October 17th. October 17th. Yeah. October 17th. Yeah. Yeah. The fairgrounds? It's at the Champlain Valley Expo. Exposition. Now, given the Bill time. Bill and Western singers come with the uh, <laughs> 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 What's that? <laughs> but given the, that's the fair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, um, you know, at that point, maybe we, we change it a little bit so it's more like, here's what we think, well, we want to get input. We'll we'll get also we we could so, present the report, yeah. though, and get their feedback yeah. at that event. Like, maybe that's maybe that's, that's what we do at that event, is it's like, uh, here's our preliminary findings, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. If we can get them together, but it's right. relatively We could, though. Yeah. We could. October 17th. Okay. So, uh, can I get a motion that uh, we participate in the October 17th uh, 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 you, uh I guess it's going to be unanimous because unanimously everybody said that give the motion. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, sorry. I was going to second. I was waiting to second. No. Okay. I was going to make a motion that we set dates for Manchester. Norwich and let's do this There's one. There's motion on the floor. Point of order. Yeah, yeah let's, no, do, no, let's do this one first. Okay, okay. all right. That, so we have Tech Jam. I'm just like a Tech Jam uh, uh, motion. Everybody raise their hand and do it. John, let's say John moved. Um, uh, Joe said he seconded for Ryan. You're keeping the. Uh, all, right, all in favor of uh, doing one at a time? Aye. Okay, everybody says aye. So now let's move on to the other. So, uh, so I'm going to tell Kathy. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. And uh, yes, so the floor is open for a next motion. Is there a voting on yeah. Yeah. Should we call Brian this? No, we no. have a quorum. Okay. Sure. So I move that we set dates for uh, Norwich and Manchester. I second that motion. I'm nervous about Manchester, I must say. Uh, I think you'll be surprised that there's, like, I, I think it's, I actually think we should take them up. The, can, well, can we can we discuss the motion? Because that's what yeah. Yeah, Robert. Okay, so I'm discussing the motion. So I actually think that we would be surprised that Manchester. There's a lot of towns close by Manchester. There's a there's a lot of economic activity.
activity going on there. It's a big shopping community and a big tourist destination. They just hosted the National Council of Women Legislators national meeting in Manchester. Um, the state reps in that area are very supportive of this, our work. So I do think that if we did an event in Manchester highlighting an AI installation in Vermont, and they're willing to do it with us, that that could actually pull out a lot of people from Bennington, Rutland, and maybe even some people would drive over from Brattleboro. Um, we need to do something in the south of the state, and this is like, I don't know, I really think that we should go for it. And if we get 20 people, it's a success, but we may get more than you think, because if they have this installation, and they're gonna do some PR, like come out and check out this installation, and um, I don't know. But I do think we need to, the, the trick is we need to do it ASAP, because once the leaves are gone, it's over. Like I think we have to do this before the leaves fall. So. Okay. Yeah, I, once the leaves are gone, <laughs> what I'm wondering about is, um, you know, how much input have we really gotten the two meetings that we've had? Have they been useful in terms oh, yeah. of getting first one? First, first one, yeah. First one was, and the second one, just because there wasn't a lot of numbers. It was getting a pat on the back for coming up to the Northeast. They, they were interested in finding yeah. out what we were doing, okay. but they were not experts in the field at all. It was really Join information. But we got some. They, we had some local, we had local representatives who came out and asked some questions and gave some feedback, and we had some local residents who, like the one guy, I forgot what he called himself, he said, I'm just a, use like this term, but, or something like that. But, but, but the point was, he asked really tough questions of us, and he raised okay. good points. So I mean, even if we didn't gather like, tech experts feedback, we got the feedback of real Vermonters in the Northeast Kingdom, like even if it's five, that, that to me that was valuable, and we had their state reps, like a good, like five of their local state reps come and weigh in on this, and they learn more about our work. So okay. I don't know. All right. So this is now two steps at a time. First question is, uh, uh, the motion says we're gonna have public hearing in Manchester taking out the uh, request for us to come and in whoever's area somewhere. Uh, so that's a motion. Are you ready for that one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So that passed. All right. And now the question is dates. Uh, when do you want to get this done? Uh, you want to get them both done in September? And then October will be the last? Uh, along with a commi commission meeting? Uh, these don't count as commission meetings. And, and as uh, we've said, everybody doesn't have to go to one. It's not uh, required that everybody get to Manchester. Uh, it's just a question of uh, uh, if there's enough presence of members of the task force that we uh, have a, uh, people who can talk back and forth with the audience. Because I think the times that opened up, and that was to me the best part, by the way, of Burlington, where it kind of opened up for us discussion uh, with a number of people in the audience talking and members of the, of the task force talking about how it was good. So, uh, anybody got a proposal on dates, Rob? Well, does it depend on what's available? I guess we can pick some dates so, and see if the... Yeah, but what kind of... How about 2 in September? Get them done. Don't, was, yes, absolutely. Get them done. 2 yeah. in September. I wasn't really, I didn't really receive any availability, just that they were more than eager. So can you, are there dates that are blackout dates for this group? I, I'll tell you mine, but I don't want to ruin everyone's fault. Yeah. Well, if we so, the, so September, just the next, every Friday in September for me is booked at this point. So if it was going to be a Friday, I, I probably couldn't do it. Um, and just so everyone knows, Friday I think is not. The there's, a, there's a climate strike on the fr on Friday the 20th, so I want sort of the, a climate strike. Oh. So I prefer we not work, do anything on the day and let people focus on the climate crisis. But um, what they, if it wasn't going to be on a Friday, what other days would work for this group? Like, would it be like a Thursday or a Saturday? Is there, you know, no, not really. Saturday. Yeah. 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 Both of the yeah. earlier ones were during the week. I don't remember what day. What, what they were what's both their there? distance safe from? It's an hour and a half to, to Upper Valley from Burlington, and it's about two hours to Manchester. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I don't think I That's think two hours there, stay two, three hours there. Yeah, three hours yeah. there. Uh, two uh, hours we understand. We understand. Uh, and, 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 uh, I, I expect that we can get traded over that one. Uh, <laughs> that's where you are. I go to the man. I go to both of them. I would like to go to vote if I can. I, if, uh, if it doesn't work for me, I don't care. Okay, how about a motion that says, Ryan, please propose to us two 
some dates in September as soon as possible. Or, or me, can, can I just say, make, can I make a motion that says, Ryan, propose some dates for us and not limit it so you can give as many as you, because there might be, if they can give us seven dates for each location and we do a doodle poll, that might help us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so for the doodle poll, so, you get some dates from the yeah. organizations and you decide. Ryan, I'll, I'll, I'll get you in time. Yeah. Yeah. You get dates, availability dates, and yeah. Google poll us. For, for September, it would, we'd just be doing one, though. We'd be doing Manchester Upper Valley, right? No. You're doing both of them. Both of them. We're trying to get them done. Yeah. Okay. Can we say between can we say between now and uh, the mid October so that he has a little more flexibility? Yeah. So yeah, look at it that way. So we, we just agreed to October seventeenth. So between now and then, yes, exactly. Do two hours. So maybe like October. Whatever they get. Yeah, early October. Whatever. Yeah. So okay. we can be great to have the end, but and remember, you're not trying to get a quorum here. You're just trying to get uh, a number of people. people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we've got that. If we get that now, I did the work mostly of trying to do the publicity uh, for Linden, and I would say that you need three weeks ahead of time to start the starting. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe we would have gotten more from Ryan's work if it was done earlier. Uh, he came in uh, closer to it. Um, but I ended up talking to all the newspapers and having chats with them and trying to get them to come and all that sort of stuff. And it took time to get all that together. So uh, so we need to get this out the right way so we get this in terms of. Okay. So now we're back to the regular agenda and we still have a gap for uh, Catherine comes and so we're back to the development of the report. Just a quick one. Um, so the commissioner or Secretary Sherman was originally on our group. Yeah. He's no longer, he's over at um, Public State. Public State. Right? He is as of uh, September, I think. Okay. Yeah. So um, since we are in some, are we in some sense sponsored by Commerce? Yeah, we are. Yeah, so, yeah, we're so meet the new center. Yeah, meet the, that's where it's going, yeah. What, what? Um, so uh, Lindsey Curley is coming in as the new secretary. Oh, how nice. Yeah, so I, I don't know Lindsey Curley, so. She's at the Department of Labor right now. Say again? They're just shifting people on the public bureau? Well, <laughs> exactly, actually. Yes. Because the commissioner of the Republican, Republican administration is on the public bureau. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, at least that's the bottom. Secretary or Commissioner of Public Safety person left as an actual opening. So Mike Shirley used to be a police chief, so it makes sense that. Yeah. Yeah. He was the Burlington yeah. police chief. He got hired as Secretary of Commerce. He had something in between. So the governor appointed my Shirley. So the question is, uh, we would like to get our, our member at the next meeting, right? So uh, do we, should we uh, I mean, I, ask Brian or whatever to approach her and try to get her to be sure she can? I can uh, approach her as well. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, I talk to her sometimes. So. Okay, whatever, we would, we would of course like that. And yeah. of course like the secretary. We love the agency and yeah. okay. every other thing you can say. So are we, we setting like up this, our meeting yeah. date? Mm -hmm. or are we now setting our meeting date? Yeah, that's where we should do that. I think we got the, the time, so we should do that. So um, uh, remember that Friday was chosen because of uh, the availability largely of Kayla and Ryan uh, Tina, because uh, they're in the legislature. And Kayla was working in the legislature and then was coming Friday afternoon to work here. So, and, I, and it was noon, I noticed this one is it was a one. It was set at noon to four, before not, not one. And, uh, and and that was a little odd too, because you had to get lunch or whatever. Uh, but there's no requirement that we meet particularly on Friday. And if I'm listening to Brian right, he'd rather that we didn't meet on Friday, because he's going to In oh, September, I would, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't want to screw the whole group up, so. No, but uh, I just want to say that it's more open. We could do a general doodle poll, uh, but this one, 
we do need a quorum. Now, if you recall at the last non-quorum meeting, um, the, uh, uh, we said that we, we, had, we would ask Ryan to uh, start putting pressure on other members uh, to get them to come, and he did some and that produced uh, a quorum, but barely a quorum. We still have members, uh, including a, a co-chairman who, uh, after the first meeting, we've never seen. Who is that? Oh, it's a big one. Can I be there? And he insisted on being co-chair. Can I Not a motion, but just sort of a suggestion. Before we get caught up in a big online doodle poll, can we try a human doodle poll really quick? Like, just like, raise your hand, because I want to see. No, no, I, I was going to come to that, because I was saying okay. it's gotten down to a quorum number. Exactly. Who, 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 yeah. uh, come, and the other people um, uh, might as well not be members. And there's a new public safety commissioner who might appoint someone else to take that place. There's a new commerce com secretary. I don't know, I might be screwing up their title, but there's a new commerce person, so they might appoint someone different. So we should just make our meeting and see who can come to the meeting. You know what I mean? And then ask Ryan to go vigorously after the other people. Yeah. Go to their homes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On the Thursdays. Can we send drones to their yeah. 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 So what do we need eight? You need eight for the corpse? No, seven. Oh, seven. So that's exactly what we got. And Brian, yeah. I mean, he was just a piece. How did Thursday? Something that is working to be late, so that was it. Uh, Thursday fine with me. The only Thursday that isn't, I think, is the Thursday Thursdays. before the. Yeah, I saw that doing some of this. So the one I'm looking at would be Thursday, September 12th. It's in the one I can't do. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, and I can't do the 19th and 20th. I can do the. I can do any of the others, but that from the 12th to the 17th, I I can't do it. Yeah. Thursday is my worst day of the week. Yeah, Thursday I tell you I prefer not. All right. So let's try Wednesday. So I can't do one say sorry. No, you may have to meet without me. No, I can't do awesome Wednesday. No, I can't work. I work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 10 hours a day each day. So, I, uh, so, so your yeah. world is either Thursday or Friday. That's it. Yeah, unless it's like in the morning. And in September, your world has narrowed to Thursday. Three Thursdays. It depends on the timing. It depends on the time. Meaning, say, by, so what? Well, like, the climate strike, I don't know what time it ends, but, like, when that's over, I can come here. I'll already be in Montpelier, you know? What day? What day? The 20th? Yeah. What day of the week is it? It's a Friday. Oh. So, if we if we switch to the morning and to the, oh, no, it would be the afternoon, because it's yeah, Friday morning. Yeah, right away. I, and you can start meeting without me if you have a quorum, and I'll just come. We just did that with John. Yeah. John, are you saying no, you can't come? I can't do it. You well, can't do it what? The 20th. Yeah. I will come in on Thursday if need be. Well, it, it, then go without me. I, I, I'm coming back from a wedding in, in Pennsylvania. I'm driving home. It doesn't have to be the 12th, all right? What if we could get the two wedding parties to agree, and maybe we could get it? <laughs> I think that would be easier. Why it's, are we like, it's like the deal we'll make. Uh,
So I heard a suggestion that we work in smaller groups between now and the next meeting to have concrete drafts, like like to, to review, and that we would use the meeting to review stuff that's already written versus generating material. Absolutely. So if that's the case, could we have a three-hour meeting on a Tuesday morning on September 17th, and between now and then, which is about a month, get to that place so that in those three hours, we sit down and we focus, and all we do in that meeting is get to a final draft of the report. I don't know you're going to get to, you still have it. It doesn't have to be finished, but a final draft. Like, it doesn't have to be finished, but like an actual report that's written that's now floating around. Like, do you think we can get, is that, if that's not realistic, fine, but. The only thing I'm worried about is that, you know, if you think about on ethics, how hard it was for us to try to find a common time, we're going to have to figure out a way of doing this, not getting in the same room. You may have because I think we just proved that it's going to be hard to get us together for anything. So how do we, I think it's I agree with what you suggested. Well, it's just we're going to need to put some more discipline on it and do it at three o'clock in the morning. That yeah, it just seems like we're all over constrained. I can make time in Burlington for a one or two hour meeting with people. The issue is just coming down here to in the middle of the day on a Friday or a Thursday when I have an eight hour shift. I can't do it. Um, and so, like for example, if, if there was an ethics subcommittee, if it was people who lived in Burlington, we called Gene. That to me is doable. You know, the problem I think was that Gene was away. It was summer, so yeah. every other week somebody was away, and so we couldn't. We were all not available. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is it might be doable for us to, at least for the ethics subcommittee, it might be doable for us to have a short a meeting sometime in the next two weeks to be ready for that. I've lost track of who these subcommittees are. Were there new subcommittees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we had to kind of, we divided the work up because when, when, you, when you were out, we divided everything up, worked on it. If you look, there is a Google Doc where you can see yeah, the latest draft, draft of everything. But I, I don't know where to find it, okay. but it exists. So a couple yeah. of uh, agenda notes that uh, yeah. Brian took yeah. or uh, John took. Okay. There are also emails on Slack. Okay. Yeah, I know it's scattered. <laughs> there is some stuff. Uh, uh, simple, right? I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are we at a pause point for you want to get to a conclusion on this date and time? I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I, I, I think we should get to a, we should make a plan before we lose our focus. So okay. I'm, I'm, I send it to think that was right to Catherine, uh, as you see. Uh, we can wait just a minute until we do it. So as far as I understand, the only time that uh, you can get all but one person for a meeting is on the 17th. Right? So you want a 17th, and you're now talking the morning of the 17th. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. So we're looking at what, 9 to so noon? Who is showing? Hmm? Who is showing at that time? I should be. You and I are. Uh, well, you're not showing on the 17th either. I, work I thought Boston. I was the only I one. I work in Boston every, during the middle. Um, oh, so no, the 17th is so. But I could, uh, but if you need a quorum, I can call him. Well, no, we're because dressed. now we're at the, you know, this, I emphasize this to Brian when we were talking after the last meeting is, this is the rubber hits the road time. You're not going to, we don't need you for a vote for form. We need you uh, participating in a substantive discussion on a draft. Right. And uh, you can do that, of course, remotely, but it is isn't as effective. It is isn't effective, yeah. I can't even do it remotely because I'm driving back to a Pennsylvania way. So, uh, but, uh, uh, it, it, it isn't as effective in great so. What it's in, and Donna's by that time into her teaching, right? And you don't. You it started at eight thirty, and then I have another class at two. And then that is a sweatshop you work. I might be going to work with her. So. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. What? What is your Monday and Wednesday would be better for me. Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday would be better. I can sometimes make a Monday work, but I can't that week. You can sometimes make a Monday work. Okay, let's let's run with that for a minute. Because I can sometimes make a Monday work. Okay. Because are there other people who could sometimes make a Monday well, morning I work? Make, I love this trip to Pennsylvania. I can make any of them work. As long as I think Monday mornings for me, I can make work better. Yeah. So can I throw an option out? And we'll yeah, throw it out. Down, or goes down to flames again. Um, Monday the 23rd, 
of September. Good. I, I could be here by 9 in the morning. I would prefer more like 10, but I would live with 9. I have to be in Middlebury in the afternoon, so this was in the morning. Yeah, yeah like 9 to noon or 9 to 11. Or that works. Or anyone else? Have for me, it's good. Yeah. As long as I can call do, in, do, do. I can find a place to you, be quiet. Okay, okay. you can't be here teaching on Monday, right? It's hard for me to get so here. Yeah. Yeah. Question: Do you have a place where we can meet in Burlington at UVM? Sure, I can yeah, right. you. What is that? That? That's kind of far for other people. To yeah, Gene hasn't piped up yet. That's I was to go to yes, yeah, yes, yeah, the biggest crowd about that. That'll be about over. Actually, two hours. what are we talking about? The 23rd? Yeah, I might be able to do it. Whoa! Whoa. Like, come here, you I know. could <laughs> just get somebody else to cover. Brian, remember, you're going to our house. <laughs> Well, I appreciate everyone's patience. I, now you're all really busy, so I appreciate people's patience for us hashing this out. So I have 9 to noon, the 23rd. So that will be a full meeting, so that means that the subcommittees are responsible for meeting between now and then yes. and having a like rough draft for their section. Yes, right. That's exactly so can, can you clarify who's on what subcommittee? Well, let's the next have our guest. No, she's on at three. On at oh, three. so we still have two minutes. Let's you do this. Let's do this. Come on, we can do this. I am not used to legislative time. Yeah. But we can do this by three. Just tell us who's on the subcommittees again, so we know. All right, so the big one is yeah. the four, uh, Brian Ford uh, uh, subcommittee. Which number is it? So we're going from the, the list of the uh, uh, report yes. items, right? And uh, so the big one was the proposal for the responsible and ethical development of artificial intelligence in the state, including an identification of potential risks and benefits from such development. That's the F, what has come to be known as the Ethics Subcommittee. Uh, I understood the order, and I'm doing five, a recommendation whether the General Assembly uh, should establish a permanent commission to study the artificial intelligence field. We discussed it by the time I'm actually doing a draft, and I'm so far a subcommittee one, I'm happy to be joined. Uh, and then when those two reported, we were going to go back to the question of three. Which there's a, there's a rough paragraph written about it, but it needs more info based on those other Yes. So I, what I propose for September is that we try to get four and five buttoned up as much as we yes. can. Yes. Yeah. Right? And remember that Donna said that if you look back at the work that UVM people did is, there's a number of states that have, are before us on this responsible and ethical development. Well, so we now, may find some models. In a, I mean, what a, you know, the well, officialness we, of it, but there's documents written on the ethical. Yeah, and we also know, um, uh, Brian posted again on Slack, we just had a, I did a promotion for Slack in your postings, by the way, John, why you weren't here. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, Brian Fossil, that's like the EU ethics. Um, uh, they just came up with, uh, I don't know what they call it. Yeah, they call it the uh, EU releases guidelines for ethical AI. Yeah, but it's not statute. It's not, I don't know, uh, guidelines. I think it was ethics. Yeah, I think it was ethics. Um, and Canada has a simple thing. We are, we, we had that before. We should ensure that's uh, seen as. It looks like, I was just doing some poking around, it looks like the U.S. is kind of leaning towards that. I mean, since we're talking about ethics, we should plagiarize, I think, right? Oh, we should just we, are, we talked about that. Yeah. 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 There's no better, God, doing all the work yourself? Well, but I think the reason was always good. I think that <laughs> what we, I mean, just to, and I'm not saying this is a shortcut, but we said, look, we're going to uh, abide by, we're going to adopt the current best standard, which is the EU ones let's say, and then we'll have an addendum that vermontifies it, and then we will, uh, we will track as, you know, as uh, standards evolve for the U.S. or international, we would, we would adapt to those. Okay, 
So we'll work on it. Right. Wait, I think right. we're done. And that's sure. yeah. But the regulation kind of comes back to are there some things you want to prohibit? Are there some things you want a looking at? So, for example, you just posted uh, Bernie's plan, a yeah, big that. plan that includes uh, uh, prohibiting facial recognition uh, in law enforcement. All right, so that's the biggest thing. Uh, I'm not promoting it particularly, but I'm saying it's that kind of stuff that we have to talk about the three beyond the ethics. Uh, can we, yes, but uh, can we take a short aside on that one? Is, is now an okay time to talk about that? Just as an operational, not, not passing judgment on it. We are, no, we're we'll still Catherine first. Okay. All right. Uh, you, uh, you've got enough on the subcommittees. We know what you're doing. What's one and two? You didn't get to one. No, I'm doing. I'm doing one. Two, and two is already two done. Nine, two and nine. We two. already did. did last week. Because well, we have one. We did a summary. Should we review it with people? Did we? We did review it. Yeah. Can you that just? That was the time where I forgot that we had done. So can you just say though what they were? A summary of the current development and use of artificial intelligence in Vermont. That's what our first five meetings were about. Right, but is that, there's actually something written somewhere? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm writing it. Okay. I'm writing it. All right, so there's nothing we can look at yet. No, but yeah. there will be, but right. that, that's the whole point of this. And then two, right. a proposal of a definition of artificial intelligence, if you need it. John posted one and used it at the, we used it at the uh, meeting. Um, and then, then we talked it. about yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Why don't we add it to it on, on the Slack too? Would they, do we? So I guess no, it's it's on the already. It's who's going to make sure that there's a a a, um, a very coherent rough draft version for us by the next meeting? Of which of that? Number two. Is that the Google method? I think it's we have Google. it's in the Google Drive. It, it's it's an actual rough draft version. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't be rougher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last time I looked, there wasn't. So that's why the only group of which Rob was good. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't force the big one. I'll check. Okay, three's the big Cayuna, but we agreed we'd do four first, and I'll give you five. And if you've got a draft of five and four, uh, yeah, it's enough, in here. There'll be enough work to have a uh, meeting on the morning of the what is it again now? The twenty third of September. Twenty third. Nine okay. to noon. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think that's a. That's it. A good point. Okay. So uh, let me uh, introduce Catherine Benham, who I don't really know, except that we had this conversation on the phone. And I told you the history here that because the earlier language in the in the law, that's Act 137, uh, said. Uh, Catherine Benham is the right person to um, munch on this and give us what is uh, the best view we could give in this circumstance. And she was one seminar party, so that's the deal. Uh, yeah, well, this is really actually our whole office is not our boss. People who are around, we actually sort of brainstorm because we're all, this is pretty interesting stuff you guys are working on. Yes. So, um, so let me uh, make everybody yes. say who they are. So, you know, I'm Mark Holmes, I'm the Chief Technology Officer for ADS Agency. I'm planning to have a temporary employee. Stop that. <laughs> uh, He's our staff. staff. <laughs> so I'll be an assistant for the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm Jack Cohn from IBM. Don Rizzo of UBM. Brian Chino. I'm here on behalf of the National Association of Social Workers. And as a state legislator. Yes. Oh, wait. So I'm here actually as a representative of FACE, Vermont Academy of Science. I forgot. <laughs> You're right. You're yeah, that's so. You know who I am, but I wanted yeah. to just frame my role here is not as a legislator. Okay. Yeah. I, that's good to know. Yeah. I actually didn't feel myself. I saw your name, and I said, okay. I'm Joe Segali with the Agency of Transportation. I'm Gene Santos from Dartmouth College. <clears throat> Jill Charbonneau, Vermont State Labor Council, AFL CIO. I'm Savannah from IAFL CIO. And I'm Andrew, a retired justice of the Supreme Court. Among many things. Um, so, <laughs> okay, we're gonna hear those first. <laughs>
sort of the fiscal impacts of our personal intelligence. That's where we took this from. And um, so I gave you this because I know you have to write a report, but I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to focus on the first page. So just to give you context, we have a lot of things going on in Vermont that are not necessarily artificial. They're not AI. We have demographic issues that are going to dramatically change things. We have other telecommunications and internet things that are changing the world, and then you know, climate change. The, the list could go on, but these are big things that are going to impact Vermont without artificial intelligence. So all these things are going on, and it's going to be hard to figure out what is causing what. I just want to give you that context, that there's a lot of things moving. And so the first point is the key point. Fiscal management is difficult, because you do have all these things going on. It's going to be really hard to tease out. So how much of this is because people are aging, or uh, you know, those kinds of things. Climate change is, is going to impact the economy and what we're growing. And I, it, there's just a lot of the interplay of things is tough. So I don't know. That, I mean, I don't think you can really measure the fiscal impact very well. You can talk about it. Um, that that's the first takeaway, which is thanks for asking us this, but we have no answer. Yes. Okay. But it's important to think about. Yeah. And um, the second thing is it is going to affect both revenues and spending at the state level. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, revenues, taxes can go up, taxes can go down, and probably be both. Some will go up and some will go down. Our spending will go up in some areas, it will go down in other areas directly. Um, and I think the next couple pages have more details on this. But um, And then you're going to have some areas in the state that are really going to suffer for many reasons, not just because of artificial intelligence, demographics, people, the Chittenden County is booming, the rest of the state is essentially shrinking. Um, so those areas are really going to suffer, and you have issues about accessibility to internet, right? So there's going to be a push from a state perspective. There will be um, in interest in trying to help those areas of the state that are not doing as well. So that's not really a direct impact, but as artificial intelligence takes over, as the your piece of it, there'll be just be a general interest in trying to help those who are being hurt by any of the above changes, including AI. And you know, there will be transitions for um, lots of people, both good and bad, right? Um, uh, but that being said, so it's hard to measure. It's convoluted, but keeping think to keep thinking about it is important, and to keep people's attention on it is important. Um, and, and being proactive about it is an important piece of thinking about the fiscal impact. So, right, you can't really measure it. You don't know exactly how much to attribute to this, but you don't want to lose sight of the fact that you all of this is going to be impacting the state government and then the state generally. Man, yeah. Uh, so hearing, uh, you know, AI in parallel with climate change or something like that, there's generally not much upside for climate change. I'm wondering, is the thinking of this that there would be a net negative from AI when you when you think of that? Because I think it's probably a balance. Net I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I, and, I'm, and, I'm and, more asking. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Was it so much asking? whether it would be or not. I'm wondering in, in the conversations that are framed in, in your area, is it generally felt that it's somehow something that we have to defend ourselves against as opposed to a source of help or something? Uh, I think they, there will be people who will not, who will suffer through some transition, who will not, who will be worse off. There will be some people who will be better off. So the state as an entity or the state as a whole may be okay, but individuals who are not, or regions that are not doing as well, uh, will, that may, that may be of interest to help those areas or those people. Um, so that doesn't mean that on that, so I, I don't know that anybody will be able to answer on that, are we a winner or a loser, because there's so much transition in it, right? Yeah, I'm more, more, more I, I agree. Yeah, okay. You're absolutely right. I'm just kind of curious in the, the tone of the conversations on around that to the extent that it does come up. Like, we found that, that there's an awful, depending on where you go in the, in the, kind of, in the state, you know, there's different things that everybody's looking at that is fearful, whereas opposed, you know, uh, it's an odd tone, you know, I, I, to me it's more positive, but I've actually gotten a little bit more balanced. I'm just curious about the tone of the conversation. So, you know, it's interesting. We have, it's unknowable, as you say. It's unknowable. So if you're asking, like, what do, I, what do I hear people talk about AI specifically? I don't have, I haven't had enough, I think I've been in a conversation of it. 
I think if you ask any economist, I mean, we look, we've, we're constantly transitioning, right? We don't have people operating elevators anymore, right? So uh, you have your phone. I mean, there, there is always a transition. So if you're asking economists, eventually it all works out and you move forward. And, and in fact, there's a great opportunity for artificial intelligence. That being said, I worry that, and I think our whole office worries that Vermont's a small player. It's going to be hard to attract people. It's going to be hard to attract. If there are if the upside, are we going to be able to take advantage of it? What's involved in taking advantage of, it, of the upside of it? And what do you need to invest in it? And how do you navigate that? And other places are better. Um, are better situated for taking on those changes. I mean, you know, we have a million dirt roads. I don't, how does that play out? We're probably not going to be the first state that is completely doing autonomous cars because of that. And um, not everybody. So I, that is, um, that's what I think we worry about more in that sense, sort of in that bigger perspective. But that we're not going to be able to manage the technology. Is that what you're getting at? I'm sorry. You're saying that's what you're worrying about. That you're not going to. That, we're that Vermont is at a disadvantage yeah. nationally in this arena. Yeah, I mean, one of the questions like that I've been trying to, in my head, figure out what fiscal impacts could be is that this is not like there's some things that are technology issues, right? This is really not a technology. Like it is technology, but at some point it transcends a technology, right? Mm -hmm. Like you had. You had the computer age, right? And yeah, you could talk about individual computers and what computers are doing, but overall, the impact of the computer age was much more macro and, 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 and like you say, varied. It was some, some cases were good, some cases were bad. Then you had the internet age, you know? I think the machine learning age is the equivalent to those two epochs, I guess, you know, if you want to call it. And so the question for us is, like, how do we? How do you know the people that you're talking to? Should we be explaining to them the specific technology, or should we just immediately jump to sort of the grandeur of this is you're in the machine learning age? The definition of what AI is, not to be you know flippant or anything, but the definition of what AI is and, and how to specifically regulate AI is irrelevant because you've already you've already it's already bigger than that, right? So how do we as a state, put ourselves into a position where maybe we're, we're behind, like you say, in some instances, but at least we're maybe early recognition of, of the bigger opportunity puts us, that's I guess what I'm wondering. I don't know if that made any sense to anybody other than me. No. But How did that relate to physical, physical? Well, the way I'm thinking about it is the fact that, right, it's an, it's an industry that you can invest in early effectively, right? It comes with risk. But you know, like you know, what what would be our what would be our competitive advantage in that industry, right? It's yeah. probably not going to be access. So in, in, in the internet age, right, it was access to you know Silicon Valley and you know Harvard, you know Boston, those areas and things like that because the resources were you know brain power students. But maybe now the the, the issue is. Problems that are being solved, you have to be closer to the problem now, right? Like there, they can be really far from the problem. But if you're going to solve agriculture and machine learning issues, you can't do that from San Jose or Boston. You have to do that in Vermont. So one one thing, what I really like to hear is that I could I answer? Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think one of the things you know, the sort of brave little state, the fact that we can be really bold. I, you know, I don't know how it's playing out, but like with things, other technologies like blockchain. Which are supposed to be you know, transformations, not nearly as much as this. It's not of this magnitude. And that's still a little bit of technology. Let me tell you, it's, I agree, but just yeah. give an example is yeah. like this that guy, Albert Goodno, you know, that there are yeah. certain things that the, the state has done or tried to do, the data registry. There's certain things that, that our small size is actually an advantage. So it might not be that we're near, so, you know, we're not in Silicon Valley of the place, but that we might have discipline. I mean, there's a cannabis registry. One of my favorite causes that <laughs> that the uh, the governor is about to announce. Uh, it's actually for CBD stuff that's based on blockchain, uh, and I'm not a huge blockchain fan. My point is, is that a small place that's yeah. that's bold and and deliberate across the state, we might be able to act more quickly than yeah. other states. So, that's a good point. Yeah. Kind of to put it to, since I think you're right, it's unknowable. Mm -hmm. and puts it to us. What can we do to advantage ourselves? And, you know. 
Are, are you going to go through, through this whole thing? Yes. Yeah, so I'm wondering if people wish to willing to part yeah. questions yeah. from this point till the end so that we can get through it. And then, sure. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Because I have questions, but I'm going to hold them because I want to yeah. hear everything. So the second page is just an interesting White House report that has been to it. And um, it's from 2016. And there's a 2019 update of it. Jesus, around here. Uh, we're struggling because, uh, so if you think about the demographics, we have a smaller and smaller yeah. population, right? So if you have if you have an ability to fill as people retire, you could you could actually have the same productivity with fewer people. Right? Um, I'm just I'm just saying it goes both. Yes, no, no, I got I got that, and I, I meant that. Yeah. In, in terms of saying it, right? Maybe artificial intelligence is partially responsible for losing population, right? It might be, right? It might be. I mean, um, yeah. When you think about you think about positioning yourself, so educating and training. If you need if you need people on the ground here, you might want to do set up education and train. Um, who is what state just put in that everybody has to do computer programming? Some state just instituted that. And I don't. I'm not saying that that's the right answer, but you can, you can. which is interesting. We've had exactly the opposite. Well, but we, yeah, we've talked about that later, but we have not been able to do that because of the certification. Is that right, Frank? Right. Yeah. So, and I don't know that that's the answer, but you think about what we're training, right? And you've got all that. So I'm not going to, it's a, you could mention these or not mention these in your report, and if there's a more recent one, you can do it. Um, so this partial list of impacts was a brainstorm in our office about trying to think about these fiscal impacts and all the trade-offs. So there's the direct ones that we talked about before. Revenues, you might have revenues going up because you might have higher income people. You might get remote workers, you might end up having work done here. Um, you might have people, services spread out of the state, so you lose revenues. I mean, there's, there, that's why it's hard to know, but um, you've got the gas tax going down if you're using electric vehicles. Um, <coughs> So the changes in the composition of the workforce, once again, are going to have impacts on the revenues, depending on how it plays out to people. As people lose jobs, as people gain jobs, as people get transformed, maybe they get educated into other jobs. Um, so that I, ups and downs on that. It's the same with spending. Does the state purchase the stuff? What do we have to buy? I mean, those are the simple ones to talk about, right? But um, the, the state has a, a, a law that I was in the mind. Uh, the, the agency reviews uh, projects, uh, tech projects over a certain amount of money, right? And yes. There has not been an AI yeah. on yet. It, it's not to review. Not, not that's, no, they've all been really tall and small. It's not a lot of but the agency we do the quarter million dollars. We do the quarter million dollars. Yeah. We, we report to the legislature on, we have a half million dollar report and a one million dollar report. But we have, Secretary level oversight and approval of quarter million dollars. So hey, it, that was an interesting question because another one of the controversies about AI in the state that has arisen comes out of the Department of Motor Vehicles, part of Joe's agency here, who say they want to uh, use AI for purposes of ensuring. Uh, they want to use facial recognition, in fact, to ensure that they have the identity right for driver's licenses, right? That's the major thing. And they've already had a little incident in which they kind of, uh, gave away some of those facial recognition to, uh, uh, to I don't know, feds or whatever that, that happened is. There's no review of that, right? That's entirely an agency decision at this point. Right. Of course, the You mean giving away the data, right? It, it, yeah. It's less really about the, the ability to do facial recognition, which is an efficient way to I, you know, check the identity of somebody. Because otherwise, how else do you, you know, Whatever method you might want to use to check identity, that's in some way irrelevant. But it's more like then we should maybe we share. Well, that was what got you the agency in a little bit of hot water the first instance. <laughs> but it seems like the latest thing is about uh, uh, another possible hot water therein because uh, there was legislation as a result of the first one, and now the agency is trying to buy software that actually uses facial recognition within the agency, not any longer uh, to put it out anywhere. But that's like a privacy, you know, who owns the data, and 
But, yeah, but there's no review of that. It's just, you just yeah, yeah. do it. But it's not a fiscal impact issue. We're trying to be, well, theoretically, it's probably about being more productive, more efficient, maybe. <clears throat> you know, but then, then there's these other consequences that happen as a result of the technology and maybe some bad decisions, maybe some non-AI bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you've also got changes to the regulatory structures, right? As you institute this, you may want to regulate things differently, and that, that takes time and energy for people. Um, and you know, the, the changes to the cost of service, I've got healthcare here, we've got healthcare a little bit later on also. That's a, it's so fascinating. You think about the quality, what you could be providing people remotely or you know, far away, and better, perhaps better quality healthcare, and how, do you, how, do you, how does it all work together? So that's, uh, anyway. Those are, those are expenditures. So the indirect impacts are what we talked about, where um, you've got incomes, you've got, where you've got things changing and there's pressure. So the, I'm thinking about two fiscal effects. One is what the state government has to pay, and then also just general land. The state government could be pushed to help, not pushed, but there may be a motivation to help disadvantaged workers or disadvantaged areas of the state. <clears throat> or um, to me, those are slightly indirect because those are consequences and then we, the state steps up to help out with some kind of economic incentive. Um, uh, we may also have more people who are out of jobs so you have more enrollment in social welfare programs. Um, and uh, uh, we have the age of our workforce. Uh, so, I mean, can you teach an old dog new tricks? Some people you can, some people you can't, right? But the, the question is how do you train people in this new a new environment uh, of work. And as, as if you have a decreasing workforce, maybe that works because you have, you know, we have this artificial intelligence that will help you. Um, seeing the importance of internet access, well, that's just a thing that you all know about, that we, it's important for many reasons to improve that. Um, potential impact on key service area sectors. This is really interesting, the healthcare one in particular, because we have these hospitals that are struggling. And uh, the state is uh, not directly on the hook as a state entity fiscally, but we're on the hook as a state to try to figure out what our non-medical services should be provided and how do we keep medical services available. And so I don't know if this falls in our I mean, I, I, I don't know, but it's a really important thing to keep in mind about how, what is it going to do for medical care in the rural parts of the state. Um, and Maybe there'll be more services you can offer in the Northeast Kingdom than you can get right now. Uh, so that is, and then it may create more jobs than because we've got more services so people don't have to travel as far. You know, it's an, it, anyway, those trade-offs are so interesting to think about this and talk about it. And um, it's exciting, but it's a little like, unclear how it's going to play out. And so once again, I think you should be proactive when you think about hospitals in particular. Those are important services, healthcare services, especially as our demographics age, there'll be more and more demand in our, our hospitals and healthcare services. And so, once again, thinking proactively about how artificial intelligence is going to affect regions and healthcare uh, is important. Um, transportation, I think we need public transit demands. Um, does the state absorb the cost? Do we do it? Because it's going to make transportation better and easier for everybody. Do we do it all ourselves? Or is it going to be shared across the town with others? Um, and, and is it going to be this interesting question about urban Vermont? Because if you've got pavement there and a lot of other places in Vermont, you don't have pavement. What is the technology going to do there? So does that impact? Does that mean, once again, there's this big draw towards the urban areas and the other parts of the state? I don't get as much um, and maintenance and expansion cost. Energy. Interesting to think about how energy is going to be produced and used, right? And how, uh, what we're going to do. And once again, it's going to be air increasing disparity. And how does that, I mean, it, um, so these are, this was a list. It's certainly not comprehensive. We sat down and brainstormed it, but it did give you a flavor of some of the things we're thinking about. And um, obviously, when I go back to healthcare, that's the one that's been in the news a lot recently with insurance and hospitals. And so it's, um, it's, it seems like a useful topic to talk about because you can see upsides and downsides on it and, and, and how it plays out will really matter to a, really matter to a lot of conjurers. So how do you make try to make sure it works well? Um, and it's just one more thing to keep in mind as you 
as you or whoever is doing the policy think about the being proactive in that. So as, you, as you've been looking at trends, right, and we have, um, I guess my question is, are we seeing like the GDP of the state kind of move in tandem with sort of the workforce demographics that you're talking about? Or is there like, are we starting to see the actual impact of like automation and some of these other things keeping GDP at either a growth level or whatever so that the demographic changes are less of a problem? Because then the question is, like, if you start talking about the fiscal impacts, like, do we, you know, or some of these recommendations are, you know, do we move from, away from payroll taxes and more towards, you know, production tax, like, you know, income taxes for the companies, things like that, but. It's a great question. I mean, it's interesting. There's a tax pressure commission, which is meeting now for the next two years. They were first doing two years, I think, or a year and a half. I can't Maybe it's a year and a half. But they're, that's exactly what they're thinking about, like, structurally, how do you, how do you think about the future of the economy? And, right. Um, I don't, I, um, I think demographics are a piece of it, but I don't think they're the only thing that's going on in affecting GDP. So you could be, uh, I mean, Vermont is, I think Vermont's amazing at, at innovation, right? People start things here. It's, a, it's an incubator, and I don't think, this is me speaking out my office, I don't think we celebrate that, how good we are at that. And, um, and I, um, but if we could promote that and, and get it channeled all that energy, there's a lot of amazing stuff that comes out of it. I mean, it's amazing when you write, you go to, go to a party and you meet these people who've done, invented crazy things and they're doing really interesting work. Um, that doesn't happen in every other place. I mean, on that point, you know, going back to this sort of brave little state, there are a couple of things that we're known for, like green. We could be the center of green AI. You know, we could yes. talk about it. You know, I mean, why not? All it takes is brand, you know, it's branding, some some small investment. This is probably mostly about money. It's mostly about vision, which is harder than money, of course. But like using AI to improve the electrical grid, using AI yeah, well, to improve the really like, quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. Right. So, so um, something I got from your recommendations, um, or maybe it's more than one thing. But I, I see that I appreciate how. The, the process of the office brainstorming all these different areas because it really shows how complicated the fiscal impact really is. And the fact that you point out that there's other factors that are gonna play into it, it's like this dance and that it's unpredictable. So what I'm getting is that <clears throat> a recommendation I might make, you know, or I might propose we make is that there be some kind of ongoing monitoring and that whether that's done through a commission that already exists or through a new AI commission or whatever, once again, we've heard from other witnesses that there's a need for monitoring because law is not gonna move fast enough to keep up with this field. And so there's gonna have to be other ways that society keeps up with it, whether it be rules or regulations or AI making decisions about AI or whatever, or whatever ends up unfolding someday. Um, and, and, um, and so I, I take that, you know, that piece around monitoring and being proactive as like a major theme of your recommendations. Um, another theme that stood out to me was this issue of like social equity, that, um, that when we look at the economy, that there's a, an impact on the lives of people and that there's, a, there's already other factors contributing to disparities in wealth or disparities of power or privilege or access or resources. And so it sounds like AI could be, it could go in any direction. And it's gonna, there's gonna be other things that play into it. So I don't know what to do about that, but I do think it needs to be on our radar screen when we move into that report. Is like, how do we address those? How do we take that into account as well? That it's not just about money, but it's about what it's doing to the lives of people. Um, and then the last thing I'll just say while I have the floor is that, um, in, in the vein of what John said, like when I originally proposed the idea of like an AI commission, <clears throat> It wasn't for me as an individual, not the body, the legislative body. It was not a fear-based thing. It was really, I imagine, like, wouldn't it be cool if Vermont became this zero waste green economy state that was cutting edge, where like, and then we did so well that we could provide all the citizens with these public goods that would make people want to live here. And then when the oceans flood and there's all these refugees that have nowhere to go, we created a place for them to come where we can handle that and incorporate more people into and then you know be a place that is like a beacon of hope in the middle of all this like crap that happens to the earth, you know? So so that being said, like 
I appreciate that you pointed out the other factors because the demographics are going to change as climate change happens. It's already happening. We're already seeing people fleeing South America and coming to the United States. And what are we doing as a nation with the refugees who are coming? Um, so I mean, I guess I just wanted to end with like this sort of like a hopeful note, which is I do, you know, I'm hoping that we can make some recommendations that are positive around how what what can Vermont do to like maximize the benefits and minimize the risks of this emerging technology. And I think you struck upon that, so I really appreciate your testimony in terms of the fiscal impact. And you know, anytime you transition, I mean, some there are some people that that suffer, right? Some people thrive and get the benefits, and some people, you know, you have to learn a new job or whatever your job is, but you know what? I'm pushing the button in the elevator, so you have to learn something new. So how do you how do you help that so it's not so disruptive in people's lives? That's what I think you were saying, right? That was great. I hope we got it recorded because, <laughs> I mean, I think you just synthesized. I mean, that's like the preamble or a conclusion of the whole thing, potentially, just the way you kind of laid that out. So next one. It is on video. I yeah. did say crap. I'm sorry to the yeah. viewers out there. Yeah, I think there's some really good high level <laughs> synthesis. <laughs> I'm trying to be better. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's not that hard, but I don't want to give you more work. I would recommend linking to Slack so that people can find whatever information you have. I think we can have that too, but I still think it'd be good. How, how it's structured now and how you're welcome. Okay, so, no, I can certainly do that. With Slack, is Slack, uh, I forget, do I have to use a Gmail account? It's pretty complicated. Slack is not very complicated to learn how to do it. So, I can use any point. I can work with the. Uh, Marketing and media coordinator in our department to try to get that up on the site. Yes, it's not. Uh, and I think Slack should be up there, but what I was just saying is, in addition to having a link to Slack, which for some people that might not be very accessible, yeah. for every meeting we had, in addition to the agenda and the minutes, if we just had a list of what the witnesses gave us in the place of the meeting, that would just be good for the public. Because then they could be like, oh, Stephanie Sabino came, let's click on her name and look at her presentation. Right, like you can have the minutes, you can click on the minutes. So like if you just have the next thing up, it's even documents. Yeah. Exactly, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, you could do Because you, you know how you have the minutes up there, you can click on the minutes and it opens the document. It's mainly just the time, place, and the agenda. Not, right, yeah. so you could have one more tab. The problem is you have multiple documents under the, that final thing. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, I'm sure you can figure it out. Yeah, the legislature does have a pretty good system, but yeah, they yeah. manage a lot of documents. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what you're set up, so you, there are other ways to do it. But it would be nice to have it because I think people will look. Yeah. It's fun to go look for this. And, and by, by the way, when I first talked to Steve Klein, he immediately went out and, and sent back from an international consulting group a long, detailed report. Did you ever read this? No. no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I went through some of it, and uh, it says AI alone is a 3% increase in international oh, global GDP. Yes. AI alone, <coughs> the internet was one and a half. So you are really talking about like, That's a big, that's worth well. That's like a good outer bounds kind of thing to say, you know, yeah. this is. But it also gives you perspective because the internet is one and a half. Yes, it does give you a lot of perspective right away. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for those of us that are around before the internet, right? 
Like it's a little, I don't know. It's a little odd. Some of us are. You know, the access in Vermont, what a disadvantage it puts people at that don't have it. It's huge. It's huge. You don't get the remote workers going there. I mean, our, you know, our state economist has two remote offices, and he can't really, he can't send and receive documents out of one of the places because the connection isn't good enough. Yeah. Like, you know. This is the story we hear all the yeah. time. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's it's if you want to attract people, if you decide you want remote workers or you want people to allow people the flexibility, how why, why would they can't live there? That's what partly I think why those urban Shetland County is booming, right? And also people like to be run. Sometimes people want a nightlife. They want to do things. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We need teleporters. That would be awesome. That, that I would go for. <laughs> okay, folks. Yeah, why <laughs> Yeah. 
going on. Oh, and, uh, that was, I remember I was probably I think that was in meeting. March. No, that was March? Yep. So did we have a meeting for the forum in May? We, uh, May, May 20th we did, yes. Yeah. And I'm looking through my notes because I think there was actually minutes that were sent out by Kayla. But let me double check. You finding, you're finding, you're looking. I'm sure. looking for minute date. Yeah, because the yeah, he want, Brian naturally wants to get uh, uh, minutes the for May. Oh, okay. So there were three. There was May. Uh, I I guess I can post the public meeting minutes that uh, Brian gave me from Linden State. Yeah. Those don't have to be passed or anything. So those should be fine. Yeah. Uh, then July 19th. You guys meet July 19th? Yeah, but we didn't have a form. I mean, it was a, the June and July were the same problem. Yeah, so I guess the only question is really if the May 20th passed. So I guess no, sorry. So in May, she sent out the meeting minutes from the public. Uh, from the month before? No, from the April public uh, hearing. Hearing in, in Burlington. Yeah, sorry. And then we can get, then that will, she, 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 the legislature went out, she may have never done it. No, I don't think she has. I don't, I mean, I've got a really good record of everything she sent. It never happened. Yeah. So the question, the problem you see is that your predecessor, uh, yeah. uh, essentially what happened is that she was, she needed a job, yeah. and she had a legislature plus this job that was enough, and then the legislature ends, and she no longer has an income. Uh, yeah. And so she immediately went and got a job in Burlington, and I don't think she, I don't think she ever did. We might ask. Yeah. We could She's write her and say, and we could ask Brian to write her and say, but I think that's the Yeah, point. I just want to make sure the minutes. What's missing? May 20th minutes. May 20th minutes. Which is the one meeting that I wrote the minutes for. That's right. No, that was one. the last one. Okay, because I handed my name. That's yeah, right. yeah. That's just for the public hearing. Yeah, and that no, was. No, it wasn't a public hearing. So it was just no. a good one. And that was a non forum or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Same with Drew And so there's meeting, there's minutes missing from May. Yes. 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 And Kayla was here. That's a little yes. So I guess that's the only one because this July one just have not happened. I think if we just asked her, she probably has it. So I don't understand or didn't expect that we would ask for uh, a passage by the House of the Minutes of a non forum meeting. It was really a helpful discussion, obviously, for purposes of moving forward, but it's not a, it, it wasn't a But you did the minutes for July 19th? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just on my computer. Those, those, we just haven't had a motion on it for passing. Right. Yeah, I understand. What I'm telling you is, because there was no quorum, I don't think it's appropriate to have a motion. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Yeah. No. But they, those can be up on the site, whatever that is. Yeah, they should be up. I, I, would, I, I would err towards posting information than, than not posting information. Yeah, and then the only other thing with the site that I wanted to address was, I know on the site it says, compose a 14 member, shall meet 10 times, uh, on or before June 30th, 2019 right now. Are, are we changing that to January? Yeah, and it's a, it's a, and the number has changed too. So uh, January. you have to know the act. It's at the end of a long act that was done at the okay. end of the session. 131, is that the, what was the? Brian sent out what it was. I'm talking about Brian June. Uh, what is the act? The authorized our initial meetings. Uh, it was age 16. I don't remember what the act number is. Yeah. yeah. It was age 16. Yeah. I know it's January 2020. You can go on the, yes, you can go on the website, put in H. H16. H16. It'll pop right up. And, it, and the current yes. uh, uh, act number will pop up. Yeah. Okay. You, can you can read it either way. Yeah. Yeah, so it was an act relating to boards and commissions, which is what our first guest was talking about. Yeah.